I've uh, managed to miss doing the quarantine lectures as I hoped I'd do every day. I'm um, down to about two or three days at the moment. So uh, not the greatest start on that. I apologise for that. It's just um, life and things getting in the way and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I thought I'd do a, an easy one today again, uh, a talking head um, sort of lecture. Uh, lecture's too strong a word for it really. A quarantine chat. Um, just because it's easier for me and it's something I've been asked a few times so I thought I'd um, commit it to role as it were and see if it's uh, helpful for anybody. I've been told you should uh, live your life as a warning or an example uh, by a few people and I'm hoping this will serve as either an example to how to get started or as a warning perhaps not to get started. Um, Either way, take from it what you will, and um, I hope it's of some sort of use to you. So I started armouring 1998, uh, doing gladiatorial armour, really simple stuff. I was in a gladiatorial group, reenactment group, called Ludus Gladiatorius, and I um, started making the simpler bits that they had, the small opera on the left leg, the belts, some decorative bits and pieces, uh, the manica that they wear down the arm, the gallerus on the shoulder, um, the retiarius, I'm trying to remember all these things now. Um, and I enjoyed them, they were very simple to be honest. Um, the internet wasn't really the go-to device that it is now back in 98. There were, I remember Topeka Museum replicas spring to mind. They were about the only places you could get stuff, and to be honest, back then, um, I don't know what it's like now, it was a bit shonky, to be fair, although I didn't know anything any different, so you just bought stuff and you tried to make it work. Um, but I did that for about 10 years, and during those 10 years I was working in IT. I uh, worked for IBM, AT&T, then IBM again for a bit, and then ended up in a company called Zyrotex in 2008, when the recession hit. And the recession gave me the opportunity to reevaluate life's choices, uh, insofar as I was made redundant. Uh, I was given a, a severance pay, a redundancy package. That meant I could continue to live my life uh, with myself, my wife, and my very small daughter at the time for around 12 to 18 months um, without having to worry, let's say that much. So I thought, after a chat with my very understanding wife, that perhaps I would try and do um, armouring as a full-time job. Step it up to medieval, because I couldn't see that there was going to be enough trade in the uh, ancient stuff at that time. And uh, see where we ended up. 12 to 18 months is surely enough time, I thought, to be able to learn a new craft or trade. Uh, my experience at that point was things like um, IT, where you could completely retrain over that time uh, in most areas of um, IT. So I thought, well, that would probably work as well. But it was a very different learning curve. And after about 10 months of this, <coughs> excuse me, after about 10 months of this, I could see I was in trouble. Things were taking me two, three, four, five times as long uh, to make as perhaps they would take a competent armour. And uh, on the opposite end of the scale, my things were only half, um, a third, a quarter as good as a competent armour. I was doing my best, um, but the, realistically, you know, it wasn't the best stuff in the world. I didn't have the research behind me um, to know what to make. And I found a few of those pieces, and I'll do a little video on those, and perhaps what I would do differently now might be of use to you. Um, so I could see it was uh, going to fail. The writing was on the wall, uh, shall we say. So I had to have a think about what I was going to do. And around about then, I got a mystery phone call uh, from a, a wonderful chap called Rupert Hamilton Fraser, um, who some of you may know. He's an absolute diamond. He rang me up. We'd only met each other a couple of times um, at this point in our lives. But he'd uh, been in a beer tent listening to me lament my woes about no armourers wanting to train and all this sort of stuff. Realistically, I don't know how true that was, but it was my experience at the time, given that I hadn't contacted many armourers. And Rupert had been in a beer tent listening to an armourer at another event. He seemed to spend a lot of time in his beer tents, uh, did Rupert back then. And uh, he, this other chap, the armourer, was lamenting that one day he's going to retire and the skills that he has built over 20, 30 years will be lost. So Rupert told me this story and uh, 
so give him a call. So I gave uh, Dave, uh, David Hewitt at White Rose Armouries a call and we had a good long chat and Dave agreed that he would uh, help train me, that I would travel up to the Midlands, um, see Dave for a few days and we would make something, whatever that was. And uh, then I'd scurry off on my way uh, with a new skill set and we'd repeat this process as often as my funds allowed, which was not very often because I had to pay Dave totally fine with that. You can't ask an armourer, or to be honest, anyone in any profession, to regularly and consistently give up their day job to teach you how to do something and then expect not to pay them. It just isn't fair. It doesn't work that way in any other walk of life. So um, I was quite happy paying Dave, but what it meant was the money, the small earnings I was getting for my house and family was then going to Dave, and my other money then was dwindling quite quickly. And again, I could see I could see the importance of this training with Dave, but I couldn't see how I would keep it going. So I contacted a group who seemed new to me at that time, uh, called the Heritage Craft Association, the HCA here in the UK. And uh, they suggested I get in touch with an organisation called Quest, the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Trust. And what Quest did um, back then, they've changed in their remit now, although they still do this, they've added to it now. Uh, what Quest would do would be to uh, give you a scholarship of money which would pay for a one-off training course, monthly training course, a regular thing uh, in education centres all with skilled craftsmen and I applied to uh, them to see if they would pay uh, for me to go and see Dave once a week, um, sorry for a working week, once a month for 10 months of the year for three years. So we could do the maths, Dave wants this much, we'll do this, there's the amount and to my astonishment they said yes and they paid for me to train with Dave like that for three years um, and it was fantastic and I always always encourage people if you're ever starting out in this find someone who can train you it may not be as um, set up as uh, I was fortunate enough to be with uh, Dave and Quest um, but if you can find a local armorer see if they will train and teach you you will learn so much even if it's just a one-off piece uh, if you go there with an open mind and willing to learn, and they can show you how to do a few bits and pieces, you'll find a lot of those skills will be transferable into other bits and pieces. Um, so, for example, I made a van brace with Dave, and then we went back another time and made a grieve with Dave. And you had very transferable skills from one to the other. That's what I mean by that. Uh, and it set me uh, up years in advance of where I would be. After those three years with Dave, Dave and I estimated that was probably about 10 years into his journey when he started. So that's 10 years worth of mistakes um, and heartache and tears out um, that Dave saved me from by showing me those bits and pieces. You still have to learn and do all of that stuff, but you know, hey, we get that. We get that. Experience comes simply by doing it. Um, but the training set me well on the path to understanding how to do things that previously I wouldn't have even been able to tackle. And I still see Dave, he's a fantastic guy, and he runs training forces. If you want to do a one-off or do a regular thing like I did, he is open to being contacted for that, I imagine, once the uh, coronavirus uh, and the isolation and everything has calmed down. Uh, so I thoroughly recommend that. Um, you won't be disappointed. And uh, so I did that with Dave, and at the end of it, I got spat out, and I was in a healthier position. Um, much of my training with Dave was somebody would say, can you make this? I would say yes, and then I'd go and train with Dave, and he would show me how to make it. It worked really well, um, like that. And that's a great way to get started if you are thinking of it. Um, striking out on your own gets pretty lonely pretty fast, and you make a lot of mistakes that you could otherwise be uh, circumnavigate with a little bit of assistance from somebody face to face you learn so much I really recommend doing that so that's kind of how I got started in this and that this was all back in 2008 so I was that 12 years ago now so I've been going full-time uh, as an armorer now for 12 years goodness how time flies when you're having fun so I had a little daughter and now I've got a little hell beast uh, running around the house as well <clears throat> creating trouble she's upstairs at the moment trying to keep the noise down I suspect because uh, she knows I'm doing this video so I hope that was of help and I've done this video a couple of times and I haven't been satisfied with the take because what tends to happen now in the conclusion is I tend to waffle on and it goes all over the place. Um, but really my takeaway from this has informed 
a lot of the advice that I give to people uh, when they say, how do I get started? And it, it sounds a bit cringeworthy, but it's, I, I feel, in, in my experience, it was solid advice. I had, I had a solid family around me that were willing to let me try this road for a certain amount of time. Because it's no good just doing it and then end up in financial ruin, um, because it's difficult. Um, so I had that. I had a good lump of money um, with my severance pay, my redundancy pay from uh, Zyrotex. So that was able to keep us going um, for a while at least. I had a good dollop of good, good luck uh, with Rupert taking the time out to call me um, and doing all that sort of thing. So um, if you ever think, oh, perhaps they wouldn't want to hear from me, I'll just give them a call. So worst they're going to do is go, yeah, thanks. But otherwise it might change their life like Rupert's phone call did to me. So I'm eternally grateful to Rupert for that. Um, get some training if you can, even if you've got to travel to do it. These distances aren't immeasurable. Uh, if you really want to do something, you'll make room for it. And there's probably somebody near, wherever you are in the world, a car journey away, a stay in a hotel away, who can train you and help you if it's something that you sincerely want to do. And see what money's available. See what assistance is available out there. Quest were absolutely instrumental, as were Rupert and David, in my becoming um, a full-time armourer, as I am now. I couldn't have done it um, without that financial assistance from Quest, without Dave taking me on, um, and without Rupert making that phone call right from the beginning. So, you know, give it a whirl, give it a try, be sensible about it, um, and see what assistance is out there. You might be surprised. Um, you know, a lot of people at the moment, they're all looking back to heritage and, and, and handcrafts, particularly at the moment. Um, changes in attitude, are massive just in the 12 years that I've been doing this um, with things like um, as, as odd as it seems things like recycling and so on people's mindset is changing from just getting something and chucking it away they want to understand how things are made how they're produced they know they've got a quality item with them so there is scope now again for people to create quality spoke items that people will cherish and look after an armor is one of those things cherish it so much they go out to a field and let men swing or men and women swing pieces of um, metal at it and try and dent it and smash it to bits. So I'll wrap up now because this is when I've ended up going off the board and just waffling forever. I hope this is useful. I, you know, it's, I hope this is an example and not a warning uh, to you. It's, it's not difficult to get started. If you truly want to, you can make room for it most of the time if your circumstances allow. But it is a difficult road to take. Um, learning a craft from a standing start um, and, and sticking with it enough so that you can make money enough. That's, I guess, the end game. You can make money enough to run your household. But something just occurred to me. You don't always have to run a household from this. You can do it because you enjoy the craft and you can perhaps make a bit of pin money, um, make a good bit of pin money, who knows, and continue in full-time employment. Um, you don't have to do all, become full-time armour. You can just enjoy the process and see where it leads. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I will try and do the one on the spoilers I found, some old greaves that I found. Um, I've shown the knife before, but I'll show it again because it always makes me chuckle. Uh, and those are the first bits of armour of that type of thing that I ever created. So I'll, I'll try and show those and I'll, I'll see what the video turns out like. I've got no real idea. If you've got any questions, anything that you want to know about armouring, even if I don't know the answer, not so much techniques and things, because I just do those as I'm making stuff, but if there's anything you want me to talk about, focus down in on, by all means let me know, and I'll do the research if I don't know the answer, and I'll see what I can find, hey, and we'll start that journey together and see where that ends up. Um, and I've also got a few books, not many, I'm not like Fred, who I've mentioned in the past, who has a fantastic library of books. Um, I, I, I've got a few books and maybe I'll do some reviews on some of those and, and perhaps guide you through some of the early purchases you can make as you're setting out. So um, stay safe and I hope this was useful.